For the first time in 52 weeks, the Tennessee Titans are getting ready to see the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's hard to believe it's been that long. We're going to jump into a very extended know your foe momentarily. But Mike, as the team gets back on the practice field tomorrow, is the message to them similar to what it was after Buffalo about just getting back to your roots and doing what you do? Yeah, we talked two weeks ago about um, this being the new season. This, this was the NFL season has just uh, begun because we wanted to make this push. We wanted to try to find a team and be, our, be the team that's going to play uh, its best football late uh, and, and get into the tournament. And so um, just like the beginning of the season, we started 0-2. Uh, we've started you know, 0-2 in this, this late season here. So we're going to have to find a way to, to get back, um, to, to make some plays, to complement each other, to do all these things that, uh, that we did to, to put ourselves in this position. Jacksonville is a big one because it's an AFC South matchup. You'll see them again in Week 18. Let's take a look at Know Your Foe now as we jump right into the week of the Jags. The Titans have been division rivals with this club for 30 years, ever since Jacksonville came into the AFC Central in 1995. They fall yesterday 40-14 to at Detroit, 4-8 and on the season. Doug Peterson is the coach there now, formerly of Philadelphia. What are some of the characteristics of a Doug Peterson team? Well, first I would say four and eight, but six of those losses have been by one possession. So they, they've been in uh, almost every game. Um, you know, you can't count on what happened yesterday. Uh, but, with, you know, with Doug, I think it's, uh, you know, it seems like it's a, it's a free-spirited group. Uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's an offense that has a lot of speed. It has uh, motions and shifts and plays that get on the perimeter with an athletic quarterback. Uh, they will mix in some some tempo uh, defensively. You know, we'll talk about them here in a little bit, but multiple schemes with uh, blueprint from Tampa Bay, where Coach Caldwell uh, spent a lot of time. So, a very good punt and kick returner. A lot a lot of speed on this football team, and you know they um, you know we'll have to be ready for a lot of game plan situations, short yardage, you know, third down, you know, thing, things that make you think and and, and make sure you're. You're, you're paying attention. Where has second-year quarterback Trevor Lawrence improved the most since you last saw him? Well, it seems to be like there's uh, some decisiveness uh, from the pocket. Uh, they are building some plays in that, that get him out in the pocket, but you know, still working his own read stuff. And so, if you don't pay attention, you know, he can pull it. Uh, that's not what they want to major in, but you can see the decisiveness there, throwing the ball in the middle of the field. Uh, trust in what he sees and then if it's not there being able to take off and and extend plays and um, you know I don't know if he was doing a great job of taking care of himself uh, this year he's trying to be conscious of you know taking care of himself and, and, and when he's time to run and you know being able to get down and but I think that there's been a decisiveness uh, to, to anticipate throws uh, a little better. Christian Kirk was a big name free agent signing at wide receiver what has he added to the Jacksonville wideout core that you can already see? Well, he can play outside, he can play inside, vertical threat, uh, good route craft. Um, you know, here you're going to see him working across the field and, uh, you know, creating separation. Um, you know, he's heavily targeted. I think he's got 99 targets on the season. Uh, so quarterbacks usually throw to the guy that's open, and uh, he, he's leading that group there. And a running back who last year was injured, this year has come back. Travis Etienne, explosive. Speed. Yeah. Speed. One, one of the faster backs in the league. Runs hard. Uh, this isn't just a, a small sub back. This You can see him falling forward. Uh, as a team, they average 4.9 a, a carry. You know, he averages 5.4 a, a rush. So, uh, you know, it, we're still going to have to make sure that, that we tackle him and that we – you know, have some hats at the football uh, because he's got speed and can run and he can make the first guy miss. It just, you know, he's had two fumbles on the season. You see this one here, which really turned the, to the game to Detroit. You know, things started really going their way after the turnover. All right, let's talk about Jacksonville's defense. They have invested a lot of high draft picks on defense. Young, athletic. Tell me about them as a unit and who do you like on that unit the most? Well, I, I think some of the underrated guys first that, that are really playing well in there is, is Hamilton at the at the nose. He's a tough run defender. Um, 
you know, obviously the, the, the length and the, the athleticism on the edge uh, with, with you know, Walker uh, and Allen, Key comes in. They got young linebackers that, that can run. You know, they've had a couple injuries in the secondary, uh, but obviously, you know, Campbell has got long, you know, he's fast, everything that uh, you would want in a corner and just making sure now that, that we're taking care of these guys and covering them up, but they don't lack for speed, uh, certainly. I was talking with Frank Frangie, the voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars yesterday. He said they're still kind of figuring it out on defense, where everything goes together. They feel like when they do, they're going to have a chance to be special. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. It, it looks like the there's multiple schemes that, that they're trying to implement. Um, and again, young linebackers, uh, are going to be there to make plays and, and have uh, impactful plays. Uh, and then maybe sometimes um, they, 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 like all young linebackers, get, get confused. And, but I think that the structure's there, the, the talent is there, and it'll be a great challenge like it is always. So is this, because you haven't seen them in so long, is this almost like seeing one of those opponents that you only see every two or four years in terms of, of the prep that begins this week? Well, we'll always try to have that prep and there'll be some familiarity uh, with, with who they are. But you know, we haven't seen Kirk. Uh, Zay Jones wasn't with them last year. Uh, some of the offensive linemen are, are gonna be carried over. Um, some of the defensive linemen, some of the edge players, but then they do have uh, new players and new schemes. So every week is a challenge to figure out you know, what we're going to do and who we're going to do it against. Is it better to go against a division opponent after a couple of disappointing losses? Well, I don't know that. I just know that it's important. Every, every game is important, but certainly the ones in the division at home, you know, are critical that, uh, that you do everything you can to, to win the football game. Be 4-0 in the division with a win. That would be fantastic. That would Mike. be fantastic indeed.